Well, first up on the bulletin, over 32 people have been killed and hundreds have been injured across in Bangladesh as violence has escalated during the student protests. Remember, these students have been demanding the quota system reform for the government jobs. In fact, on Thursday, the protest took an ugly turn as the demonstrating students set fire to the country's state broadcaster. Well, just a day after, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina appeared on the network seeking to calm down the escalating clashes. Well, hundreds of university students across Dhaka as well as other cities have been holding rallies for weeks protesting against the system of reservation in the public sector jobs including that for the relatives of war heroes who fought for the country's independence from Pakistan in 1971. Well, these are the anti-quota protests which have been erupting in Bangladesh. This is already three days now that we've been getting you the details. What's unfortunate is the level of clashes have been such that 39 people have been killed in the last few days alone. In fact, the protest, remember, let's give you a bit of a background. The protest had begun last month after the Bangladesh High Court had reinstated the quota system for government jobs, overturning a 2018 decision by Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina government to scrap it. However, the Supreme Court suspended the High Court's order after the government's appeal, setting a date of 7th of August to hear the government's challenge. In fact, the demonstrations escalated when Sheikh Hasina refused to meet the students' demands, citing court proceedings. She said that let the courts decide for. In fact, they turned violent earlier this week following clashes between thousands of anti-quota demonstrators and the members of the student wings of Sheikh Hasina's Awami League party. In fact, the police also resorted to using rubber bullets, tear gas, as well as noise grenades to try and disperse the protesters. However, to no avail. Unfortunately, so far, 39 people have lost their lives. Let me go across to our consulting editor, Shrinjo Chaudhary, who's joining us with all the details. Unfortunate events which are unfolding over quota in uh, Bangladesh. Shrinjo, if you can put a perspective on this. Yes, things are getting bad. But what really happened was when this government, the Sheikh Hasina government, decided that yes, yes, 30% uh, of seats in educational institutions and jobs would be reserved for families of freedom fighters. It really means that the total quota, if you include women, if you include districts, if you include tribal people, it goes up to 56%. Now that's a huge amount, double. In India, it's, uh, it's almost half of that. Mm -hmm. Now you have 56% quota. Then of course there have been cases when the wrong people have got into this quota. And uh, this also has re resulted in disaffection. Now, as a result, uh, also you will have to see, if you take the point of the students, when was this freedom movement in 1971? How many years ago was it? Over 50 years ago. And as a result, the freedom fighters, their grandchildren are fighting for these quotas. Not they, not their children, but their grandchildren. And this is something that has not gone well. Also the fact that because of various other factors, uh, this has become something that not only the students, it has got, unfortunately perhaps, the support of the Jamaat and other elements. Hmm. Now once that happens, this begins to spread. And this is the primary problem. People like the Jamaat have got involved in this student's problem. And it is feared in India that it's likely to get worse. Because as it is, you have 56%. Then among the 44, maybe sometimes the wrong people are getting into the 56%, which is making things even worse. Then apart from that, you will have other, uh, other reasons for anger, for unhappiness. All of this comes forth. Sometimes one small thing will make people focus on every other problem there is in the, uh, in the country. And this has been the case. There has been a little bit of overconfidence in the government, but it has to be said that the students' agitation has been fueled by uh, the Jamaat and similar elements, which is a very worrying feature. And things are now getting very difficult. 
how Sheikh Hasina herself, uh, a very pivotal figure, very important figure, not just for her country, but for the subcontinent, uh, but also for the world, will deal with it is remains to be seen. The Indian government will naturally support her. She is the ruling party, uh, the ruling prime minister. There is also, uh, sadly, some level of anti-India sentiment. Now, this is being fueled by the Jamaat because the current government of Sheikh Hasina has been very supportive of India and vice versa. But it's the uh, Jamaat which is also fueling anti-India sentiments, which is making the situation a little worrying for Indians. How this will get sorted out is very difficult to see because things are only getting worse. Uh, and it has been over these last two, three days. Uh, that's very important that you're talking about the India angle to all of this. Any kind of word coming in from the Indian government, words as well as offers to help? Well, nothing officially. We'll have to see how the external affairs uh, spokesman says what he has to today. But quietly, there would have been help. But it's an internal matter. It's a strictly internal matter where it's about agitation over quotas in colleges, in jobs, for jobs. So how it would be perhaps even counterproductive if India gets involved here. Because courtesy of the Jamaat, there is a level of anti-India sentiment. Hmm. Yes, absolutely. The level of anti-India sentiment within the Jamaat is something also which is of concern for India, but also the fact that the Jamaat is also infiltrating a lot of what was initially seen as student protests. But now, as you can see, as Srinjal was also putting all of this into perspective, saying that it is also fueled by external elements outside the student union, such as the Jamaat, taking an active role in inciting this kind of a violence. Uh, Srinjal, the Sheikh Hasina government, what has it done so far? Of course, uh, she has been speaking again and again. She gave uh, an address as well. However, the broadcaster's building itself was burned down. That is the extent. Are, are, is she sending out messages to try and assuage the fears? After all, the entire issue is currently sub to this. Yes, there are two issues. One, of course, Sheikh Hasina herself has said it's a legal issue and she will wait for the court's verdict. So that is one. The other is, of course, there has to be law and order uh, uh, handled as also a law, a law and order problem. So that process is also on. But it is something that the courts will have to seriously think about because the matter is getting out of hand. Because 30%, uh, first of all, then for women, for locals, for tribals, it adds up to a humongous amount, 56%. And to that, if you see leakages, someone who is not uh, eligible for it, getting it, then there is rage, there is anger, there is unhappiness, and all of that is visible on the streets. It's interesting because uh, we have seen similar anti-quota protests in India as well. But then, yes, this is Bangladesh's anti-quota stir, which really has spiraled out of control. We'll have to wait and see how Sheikh Hasina administration decides to go ahead with this. Thank you so much, Srinjoy, for putting all of this into perspective.